I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, welcome to Bigfoot, America's Creek Devil. Tom, would you like to take the lead on this? Absolutely, I'd like to introduce our guest. This is Brett. He has a channel out there called Desert Sasquatch, and I actually have been a... uh, uh, a viewer and subscriber of his uh, since, I don't know, three or four years before I joined Creek Devil. But what caught my attention was Brett recently posted a video uh, where, Brett, you were out walking in the desert there. You've got some desert property. And something had stomped, tromped a circle around a juniper tree or or what you call and forest calls uh, cedars and i was like i have seen this before uh so i'm going to really uh, engage forests and forests is our uh she's our team anthropologist so um i'm just going to real quick i'll do a quick pump here uh brett's channel is desert sasquatch brett's been doing this for some time and hey i'll tell you this if nothing else, if Brett had nothing to do with Sasquatch, I would still watch his channel just for the scenery. I love the desert. It's just fascinating. And he's got some uh, great vistas on there. So, um, Brett, I'm going to bring you in. And, and real quick, I got a question for you. Sure. Um, what is the episode that has the uh, circles on it? You know, I wished I knew the exact episode um, because, to be honest with you, in the beginning when I found that, I almost didn't film it because I thought it was weird. I thought it was, I didn't know what to think. And it wasn't just Mm -hmm. one tree. It was many. And I, I just thought maybe some animal was, you know, deranged and, circle in the tree i couldn't figure out what it was i still i mean i still really don't know but it's something i I couldn't get any tracks out of it because it was just a big it was like a just it was just a bunch of stuff moved like bark and and limbs and, and whatever else came off the cedar tree um it wasn't just cedar trees either there's some pinion. Well, it's a mystery, uh, no doubt about it. And uh, I think I sent you a couple of pictures from yeah. Forrest. Okay, and you said that looked very familiar? That's pretty much what it looked like. Yeah, so we don't know why they do it, but it's a, it's a behavior. And, um, you know, they're – who knows – But one of the things in this business that I've discovered is if it's weird, it's important. And, um, Will, you would agree, like probably most everything in the Bigfoot evidence world is weird at some point, right? Well, I guess what (laughs) makes things weird is if it's something that you're not familiar with, you haven't seen, and you can't think of what else would have done it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 10 years ago, if you'd asked me, or even six years ago, I would have said Bigfoot's a joke. I would have never, and I'm an outdoorsman, I would have never believed any of it. But now you couldn't prove it otherwise to me. Um, Some of the things that are strange, they're just, there's no other explanation. And it's, I mean... I came across tracks in my property about seven years ago that made no sense. And they were huge and they walked all the way around my property. And from that point on, I've been on the search and there's been a lot. There's been, I mean, I've seen them. I've heard them scream. I just, it's just been, 
I don't know. It's been an addictive thing that sometimes I wish I didn't have. <laughs> well, I can 100%, 1000% relate to the addictive thing. Um, and I got to rein myself in at times. And, and this is actually on some advice from Will. Uh, I don't think he gave it to me directly. Uh, it may have been something I heard him say offhandedly, maybe even before I joined Creek Devil. And, um, well, you probably know what I'm talking about, where you mentioned that you need to, uh, this is a paraphrase, but you need to be careful that you don't become so addicted that it um, ruins the rest of your life. You know, it, 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 you've seen people where it's kind of uh, taken over and uh, to the exclusion of everything else in life that's important. Oh, many times, yeah. No, I agree completely. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a puzzle. I mean, it's the brain. Right? Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you know, I, I I love to hunt, fish, all the outdoor stuff. But once that happened and I realized that it was real, it was something different. And it'll and consume you. It, it really does. And that's the thing. I think in a lot of ways, um, it 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 uh, it attracts the attention catches the attention of people like us that are outdoors people um i i don't hunt anymore or fish but i i used to do that a lot in my younger years and and i still go out and hike and haven't camped <laughs> since i've had an encounter but i'm rethinking that but um for people that are oriented towards the outdoors yeah, it's very addictive. And and I look at it kind of like a it's sort of a mystery or a puzzle that needs to be solved and we're still working on solving it. Um but what I've at some point I can't put my finger on when this happened, but I came to the conclusion that just because I or somebody else hasn't walked right up and found one of these things, looked at it, you know, spotted, and I have seen one now. Um, under no circumstances does it mean that they haven't seen us. I think oh, that yeah, we're, yeah. I think we're seen far more often. If we're in their territory, I would say it's a hundred percent chance that they've spotted us. You turn around and you look towards them, and they move so fast they're behind a tree before you get your head spun around. Well, for example, my son was with me the other day and we were out hiking. I always carry a gun and not, not so much for Bigfoot or Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, more for mountain lion. But he saw two or three that were flanking us and he kept telling me there's something there. And I turned around. By the time I turned around, I couldn't see it. And he's not one to just say I, he saw some because you could hear them. And you know, I, I would much rather hear them than have them scream. The scream is just too much. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's too much. It I I it's it goes to your core. Hey Brett. Uh yes. I have a question for you. Where sure. in uh where in Utah are you located and where were these actually, uh circles? I'm actually on the Nevada border on that mountain range that runs along the Nevada border. It's about nine, 10,000 feet. Uh -huh. My cabin's at about 7,000 feet. So, so it's not technically so a high desert, but there's a lot of pinyon trees because of fires and that kind of thing. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of Aspen and, and Ponderosa pine and that kind of thing. But most of the activity I find is at about 8,000 feet. So, and it's been so that way for years. So was this actually in Nevada or was it in uh, uh, Utah? Some of it was in Nevada and some of it was in Utah. It's there. It's right. It's right there. I mean, the sign for <laughs> they have a sign up there that says Nevada, and then there's a <laughs> sign that says Utah <laughs> in the mountains, uh, even. Well, I'm just trying to figure out if it's uh, uh, if you're uh, along the northern border or the the southern border. I actually it's the southern so. border. It's probably 
I don't I don't know. It's it's Pahrump, north of Pahrump. Um, oh, oh, okay. There's really not any towns around here. Um, but it's it's in a it's in a vast wilderness that you know, you don't see a lot of people, but you do see a lot of hunters because it's it's trophy elk area. You have to draw to to, to hunt elk here. There's a lot of game, deer, elk, um, just, just, just a lot of game. And there's a, most of the mountain range is full of springs. It's not like big rivers running down. They're mostly springs that run. And so it's, it's a unique place. I've never been anywhere like it. That's why I built a cabin here. It's just different. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that clarifies it for me. Cause I was, I was thinking that uh, didn't sound true for uh, the, the northern border, but uh, the southern, yes. Uh, so, like I said, I went to college in, in Utah, so uh, I've been all over Utah. And I yeah, like it's, it's it's probably, I don't know, um, 200 miles from St. George. Oh, okay. North. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, up along the border. It's somewhere you'd never think to find this kind of thing, but boy, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I built the cabin before all this happened, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I I wouldn't change it. I mean, they've never, nothing's ever really happened to me. So except for one time <laughs> and I've never gone back to that location. Well, tell we us about a, that. What, what happened? Well, me and my brother-in-law were out looking for horns and a, and a good place for the bow hunt. And we went deep into this area that was, it was, I think it was in Nevada by the time we got there, but we had a, a, a permit for both that Nevada and Utah. And we came to this, it looked like a hut, but it was, but it wasn't a hut. It was like a, I mean, it looked like it was something for a juvenile. Um, some kind of I've got it in one of my videos somewhere I like one of the first ones and um we walked up in there and this is where I found the femur bones that had been broken in two not cut broken and you can't break a femur bone unless you've got a, a machine I mean no human can break it and there and I've never seen it since two femur bones were broken and at that point, we walked up in closer to the, there was a kind of a cliff area. We walked up to that and we started hearing it. And this was before we really knew a whole lot. I mean, I, I carried a gun, he carried a 45. And all of a sudden out of the blue, we were charged. I saw the legs, I saw half the body. He saw the whole thing and he freaked out and shot, not at it. He wanted to shoot the scared away and I fell down and I mean, it was crazy, <laughs> but I've never been back to that area since. I mean, I assume it was some male trying to show dominance or whatever, but ever since then I've stayed out of that area. What, um, how close did it get? I mean, what happened then? Did the, did it turn around and run off? Did you guys, successfully scared off with the gunshots or you know what happened well, i could see the hair on its legs and its abdomen and it was hair like flowing hair i could see it and it was running on two legs so obviously well you know if it's a bear i mean there's no bears here anyway um but it it was standing on two it was huge and i didn't i didn't shoot i I was filming, trying to film the bones and stuff. And then all of a sudden this thing comes out of the blue and it was, I, I know it was trying to scare us away. Um, I don't know what it was hiding. You know, maybe there was young there. I don't know. I just know it came out fast and we were deep. I mean, this is where most people never get. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen, you know, I mean, it's, if you wanted to hike in there, it would be like a 10 mile hike. And that's what scared me the most is I'm thinking, how are we going to get out of here if he starts to hunt us, you know? And after the gunshot, 
you know, we, we took off and he never followed, never had any, I've never been back to that area. I've never had any problems since then, but that was, that was intense. I mean, that's one of those things you probably should hang up the gloves after that, but I didn't. Right. No, it's, it's usually just the opposite. It gets you even more into the topic and more intrigued. Um, so what kind of bones do you think those were, those femurs, and how how big were they? I'm just wondering, were they animal or? They were elk you... bones. Oh, they're they were elk. elk bones. And they were huge, okay. and, and you couldn't, the amount of pressure it would take to break one of those to get out the, the marrow is more than any human could ever do. Oh, yeah. You couldn't even do that. You'd have to chop it with an axe over and over and over. And it was broken by just snap, like you snap a twig. And yeah. I have that on my on my page. That's that's my main page because that's just something you don't see. Right, you just don't right. see femur bones broken too. It's one thing if it's another bone or rib or you know something else, but not a femur, especially on an elk. Especially on an elk. It's, it's it's like, you know, I've worked on a ranch where we had to, um, you know, we, we had to uh, gut cattle, you know, and, and I mean, right. the cow bones, it's it's basically the same as that, you know. Exactly. And there's no way anybody could break that with their hands. And why would they? You know? 10 miles. Yeah. Why 10 mile hike. Yeah. What's what's the purpose of that? So that had to be. Um, wow. How long? How many years ago was that? That was like five years ago. Oh, okay. Well, Maybe not, six. Yeah, I don't remember how that long I've been doing it, but it's yeah. been a while. <laughs> and I and, and and I went through periods where, you know, I I got consumed and I had to stop, you know, with work and family and everything else, and so I went yeah. up and down, up and down. But once I built a cabin. You know, I have more time to to go out and, and explore and figure out what's going on. I just, it's been, I figured out the trail cam thing doesn't seem to work very well, but um, it's, it's, a, it's an enigma. I mean, it, you, you want to say, yeah, it doesn't, it, it's not true, but you can't if you've seen it. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes it'd be easier to cope with it. Well, and I was curious, um, you and your son uh, ran into these things. How long ago was that? That was about a week ago. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. He he had me freaked out. <laughs> I'm like, are you sure you see them? He's like, I, I can see them. And I could hear them. And I hear them all the time when I'm out hiking around. You can hear them flanking you or watching. I mean, yeah. you can tell. It's not oh, a yeah. mountain lion. You wouldn't hear a mountain lion. And, you know, so you, so you know they're there, but it's different when you see them. Yeah. We, I mean, you uh, didn't see the bull, the head and everything else. You saw the hair and the movement. And there's nothing yeah, what else was that it that you... I mean, an elk's not going to follow you. They don't. They go the other no, way. That's been my experience. Quickly, everything, does. everything goes the other way. Um, so when you only saw the legs and part of the torso, it sounds like, was it that he was blocked by the shrubbery or the... the... Yeah, it was really okay. thick. Okay. It was really thick. But the, but the noise that, that he made when he started to charge was like... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it, it was louder than it was just because we were freaked out, but it was it was intense. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know back then that lots of times they'll bluff charge just to get you out of their area. I'm thinking we were done, you know. And then after that, after the shot, that it went away. And that's part of the reason I carry a gun, not for, to shoot them but to scare them you know if something happens i that that loud pop 
lots of times will deter them. And I think they I never know. had to do it since. Well, I think they know what a gun. I think they. I think they know what. Oh, weapon, I mean, sure. coyotes know what guns are. I think. You know? Yeah, I'm sure they know, and yeah. they can probably smell it. Well, bears mm. know what guns are. I mean, you go hunting in Alaska, and uh, uh, you, you shoot something. Hunters up there know to get their kill quickly, get it uh, processed, and get out of there because uh, the grizzlies, they hear the gunshot, gunshot, and they're looking. Okay, where did Absolutely. it come from? Which direction did it come from? And they know the dinner bell's on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then when you're dealing with something with a higher IQ, then you have to wonder, you know, you just, it's, I just, for me, I mean, I see mountain lions. There's a lot of mountain lions here, a lot. Um, I rarely see them. And there's probably, geez, I don't even know. There's the fish and game have, have uh, bounties on them right now. Cause there's so many, um, oh. But I, but you never see them. So you imagine a mountain lion that you never see, but there's thousands of them. And then you put something that's smart with the same amount of camouflage, if not more, and you're never going to see them. You know, that's a really that's, good point. Yeah. You know, and that's what, that's what, it's hard because you want to put out a trail cam, you want to do this, you want to do that. But they, I'm sure their smell is way more enhanced than ours and you know who knows what else well i think a couple of things with trail cams that they just don't work is number one the creatures undoubtedly it's undeniable they can see infrared so most 99 percent of the trail cams are off but they have an infrared sensor and these things see that a mile away they just avoid it and the other thing is uh, all primates, they've done studies where um, gorillas, chimps, orangutans, all different types of primates, if you put something man-made uh, in their environment, they avoid it like the plague. They pick up on it. Yeah. Uh, something and man-made see, in think, a man-made environment's okay. I think you're right with that. I, I think they, a lot of the time when you put out a trail cam, usually it's a remote area. They're probably watching you. Yes. <laughs> and that's that's the truth, in right. my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're under observation far more. Why not? Why wouldn't they? You know, you're in their backyard. Of course, they're going to keep an eye on you, and they want to know what you're up to. Yeah. E- exactly. I mean, there was a time, this was before I believed in any of this. Um, I went to a, it was Boulder Mountain. It's on the east side of the state but it's it's over 11,000 feet in elevation it's got it's all it's mostly um uh aspen and there's a place called bear creek we used to go in and fish and me and my wife at the time and my daughter we went down in there and we were coming out And it's super, super thick, super, 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 it's crazy thick. And all of a sudden there's this scream, like a, just, you know, you know what the scream is, that scream. But back then I didn't, I'm sitting there trying to rationalize a wolf being killed by a bear or something. I mean, (laughs) it was crazy. I never could put my finger on that. And then after all this stuff happened, I realized exactly what it was, but. You know, your mind plays a lot of games when you don't know what it is. Well, and, and you can tell, you, you especially as a hunter, you go through the process of elimination in about a half a second of what it's not. Exactly. And your and, eyes will play those games, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah, know, absolutely. You'll, you'll, you'll be like, well, I had to have been an elk. Or that had to have been a bear, but it was standing on two legs. How is that possible? Well, it stood up for berries or something. <laughs> it's just crazy. And I think well, that's, I think, you know, because of the intelligence level and, and I mean, I did a video where I went out and put on a ghillie suit and I walked out into the cedars and the pinions. And I was completely gone within 10 steps. 
you couldn't see it on the on the camera. So you imagine something that's more camouflaged than a ghillie suit. I mean, they could be 10 feet away and you'd never see them. I mean, after I did that, I realized <laughs> they could be anywhere. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I've i never shown the picture. I, I mean, Will's seen it. Forrest has seen it. Um, I have taken a picture of them, um, actually, of four of the creatures. And um, one was with my wife. My wife grew up in the area where we took the picture at. And, you know, long story short, we had no idea. We were 50 yards away from where this thing was. It was on the other side of this natural spring and we were in a very very heavily forested area of um, old growth tree so it's a little bit dark in there but i had i had a creepy feeling but that's all we had and i and i just did a kind of a 180 degree panorama you know took a picture here 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 and it wasn't until five and a half months later that somebody that will knew who was a military uh, photo analyst saw it and said oh by the way do you see the one standing next to the tree looking at you (laughs) and i was like oh you're full of it yeah except uh, except he was he was correct so and it it was perfectly motionless i mean why i was looking right in that direction why didn't i see it oh the camera saw it and 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 have you noticed that a lot of the time when people see them they're they're moving back and forth I think that has something to do with the wind because it's hard to see them if they're moving. Not a lot, but if they're slightly moving back and forth, if there's wind, it's almost impossible to see them. Are you talking yeah. about swaying? What's are you that? Talking I'm about, sorry. Are you, are you talking about the Bigfoot swaying? Yeah, how they sway. Yeah, that's not that's, a good thing. That's not a good you thing don't think? when they start... No, <laughs> primates. When when primates start doing that, that's uh, they're trying to work themselves up into. Uh, uh, usually, uh, it, it exhibits excitement, and they're trying to work themselves up into a uh, agitated attack. state. And, well, yeah, I don't want it, to see that. It, it doesn't necessarily mean an attack, <laughs> but it, it means they're trying to. They're they're actually thinking. Uh, you know, they're trying to work themselves up into an agitated state. Now, I was going to make the comment. Um, jump in there about the the behavior of them being in the woods and just watching that is also a very typical primate behavior i mean you know let's face it when humans are out in the woods they're usually let's face it we're usually not up to good we're either hunting to kill something or um tromping around in the the brush often too often destroying things Right, and invading their so, territory. Yeah, and, and so animals look at us in a, a different light than what we kind of view ourselves. So, uh, right. you know, we think we're not doing anything wrong, us being the uh, apex predator in our minds and our brains, but in fact we're not. But, uh, you know, um, so I kind of chuckle sometimes when I think some of these people get what they deserve, but... Uh, uh, and that'll probably bring out the comments, but, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> you, you know, exactly what I'm saying. So, yeah, I do. <laughs> so they, they're well, these do. Animals are looking at us as the, the bad guys, basically, you know, yeah. we're in their territory and they've been there a lot longer than we have. Well, I yeah, do notice. I, I, I always, that, when you said that uh, the uh, parks and wildlife, uh, they always, uh, you know, that they think that there's too many cougars or they think there's too many this or they think there's too many that, and then they start putting a bounty on them. And I'm like, right. <laughs> and what, what is the number that determines what's too many, you know? I think there's too exactly. many people out there. Does that mean we get to put bounty Yeah, there's too many dang people, that's for sure. <laughs> So do we get to put bounties on them, you know? But uh, exactly. I mean, I know I'm being ridiculous with that statement, but but you know what I'm saying. So uh, I know I, I, <laughs> it kind of it kind of aggravates me sometimes. But anyway, uh, well, you know, I, I I I have noticed guys. one one thing um, when I go out alone, it's a completely different feeling than when I go out with somebody else. 
It's almost like, especially in the areas that I frequent, it's, I don't have that feeling of doom and gloom and fear. It's almost like they realize I'm not there for, you know, I'm not there to hunt. I'm not there to kill anything. I'm not there to do anything, but just, you know, look at things. And, you know, it's not great for filming because I don't, you know, I don't film anything, but I, it, it does give you that feeling of, you know, everything's okay. You know, and and I'm not packing a gun in my hand. I do, I do carry a gun, but it's not, it's not a rifle or anything. It's tucked away, but that's more for mountain lion than anything. Well, I, I think that, and the other guys will probably tell you the same thing that it's, even when you're by yourself, um, which I don't recommend, but uh, um, you you need to be ever present of mind to uh, you know be aware of your surroundings because yeah. uh, I, I don't I don't trust them and I I think the other guys would probably chime in on this one that, that they're not to be trusted so uh, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't even if I was tromping through the jungles of uh, uh, you know <laughs> the Congo I would not. I would be the same way because, uh, you know, probably for, for looking for humans as well as the chimpanzees, but, uh, um, you know, chimpanzees are not to be trusted. Uh, I mean, gorillas wouldn't, gorillas wouldn't bother me so much. I mean, they usually, uh, avoid any type of interaction, but chimpanzees don't have, have, they don't have any hesitation about interacting with you real quickly. And isn't, isn't it kind of peculiar that they share the most, DNA with humans, and then we wonder why humans act the way they do. So, you know, I rest my case. It's true. <laughs> I mean, I agree completely. There's, there's, I'm sure there's those like that one that I ran into that was aggressive. Um, you know, I don't know. I, 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 the reason I go out a lot alone is because I get more footage, I get more interaction. Um, that could be a bad thing, <laughs> but. I used to take a dog and the dog wouldn't go with me anymore. So <laughs> I just kind of go out on my own and now I go to why. the areas where I feel like there's the less. <laughs> <wonder there's>, why, <laughs> <too>. <laughs> I've got one, I've got one video where my dog's behind me and he's just looking back and back. Cause I had the, 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 the camera on both front and back. And that dog's just looking back and forth, freaking out. <laughs> I never saw anything, but he did. <laughs> oh, he probably smelt it. <laughs> yeah, he probably did or heard it. Um, but, you know, I try. I, I, it's hard to say. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that get taken because I'm sure there's people just like there are humans that are evil. But, you know... It's just one of those things where once you get it under your skin, it's hard to get rid of it. Oh, it is. They do. I, I will say, I, I was going to comment. If you're out there alone, whatever you do, I don't know if you guys get mushrooms there in the rainy season, but don't pick <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> they, we Here in Oregon, it's, it's an annual thing that people vanish. And 85% of them or more are mushroom pickers and they're always out there alone because they don't want other people knowing where their secret spot is and foop, they're gone. Now they didn't fall down a ravine. They didn't break a leg. They didn't injure themselves and they didn't get lost. Uh, they send search and rescue teams out there. Every single time they find nothing. You get the dogs out there. Isn't they that find crazy? nothing. Yeah. But I think something I found think them. Like, You've watched that, that 411, right? With I can't remember his name. Um, David Pilates or that does yeah. that um, that thing. And most of them they never are heard from again. You know, and if you if you died naturally or you broke your leg or whatever, they'd find they'd find things. Even if it was a mountain lion attack, they would find clothes. But they never do. They never do. Well, you know, the other thing is I would say to anybody listening, because the one thing that our channel is very much uh, tuned into is, um, 
you know, public safety. But have an in-reach or a spot, or there's another one out there. I don't remember what it is, but uh, um, you know, something that you can have a satellite communications for SOS. Because if you do get in trouble, uh, you want to be able to call in your coordinates and get get a SAR team, get somebody out looking for you. Because it takes a while. You know, if you yeah. if you if you break a leg, you fall down a ravine, or you know, whatever kind of trouble you get into. They don't show up an hour later. You're lucky if they show up 24 hours later. Well, I had a strange thing happen to me just about two weeks ago. Um, I have a fence all the way around my property. It's kind of a deer elk fence. I don't know why they put it up. This is before I bought the property. Um, But I was walking the outside of the property. I came across a bunch of clothes. There was a jacket. There was a blanket there was cans of food and there were a pair of gloves and nothing else. And I thought, well, that's weird. And then two days later I was out hiking further down this Canyon and there's another set of clothes, just clothes. Um, and I, I, I called in to see if there was anybody missing or anything like that, but who leaves? And these are, the, I mean, one of the coats was a field and stream coat, and you know those aren't cheap. No, and uh, and uh, they were just gone. There was no. I looked around to make sure there wasn't a body, even though I didn't want to find one. Um, right. But there was nothing. Two really completely separate place, almost like two people got lost and they died in different places, but they didn't die because they weren't there. Oh. Just do you um i'm curious if you get people in that area where you you, you look at the newspaper or now it's going to be the you know the news channels on the internet do you ever get people that are missing or lost you know oh well bill you know we've been looking for him but he's gone and you know and, and i i went to the, the police had them look into it i went to missing persons nobody was missing so if it was somebody they were from out of this area Oh, interesting. But yeah. what's weird to me, though, is why they weren't there. I mean, why would you leave all those, you know, all that expensive stuff and just leave? Right. You no, know, we've, that makes we've heard that before. Yeah. That's, I mean, I feel like the field and stream. Trying to document it and stuff, but I don't know. It's just weird. How long ago did this happen? This is about two weeks ago. Oh, well, this is recent. Okay. Yeah, it's really recent. Tracy, what about been... you? Um, do you guys have anything happening in your area uh, like this, or is this something that you even follow? I haven't heard of anything around here lately happening like that. Um, I do remember you were talking about the mushroom pickers. There was several years ago up in North Alabama, a man that went missing while he was out picking ginseng, uh, and they've never found him. Uh, but I, I wanted to ask, how long do you think those clothes had been there? I think they were here. I think they've been there since like October. Okay. I don't think they were here during the winter because we had so much snow. They couldn't have made it through the winter. They were a little older. But what's weird is why they would leave all that. I mean, there was, there was, I mean, there was even underwear. Wow. Like Fruit of the Loom underwear, field and stream jackets, um, uh, two awesome blankets, um, socks. Uh, There weren't shoes, um, but there were cans of food like beans and, do and water bottles there are a few water bottles but it was just it's just i've never seen that before i've seen shoes out in the middle of nowhere that i've wondered why they're there especially if they're children's shoes but i've never seen this and not only one but two how far out in the area because what i'm i'm These just curious if there's any cabin. Okay. I mean, I just I'm just wondering, maybe homeless or? 
No, oh, okay. they wouldn't have that code if it was homeless. All the stuff that I saw there was, it wasn't, there's no homeless out here. Yeah. Well, that was... First, I thought maybe it was 100 when I found the first one. I thought maybe 100 got lost and, and he got scared and he left his stuff and ran off. But then when I found the second one, I'm like, this is strange. I mean, there's been people that have gotten lost in a car when it's snowing out here and they, they, they wander off and die. But, but there's no roads to this area. I mean, not even close. And not only that, but if they were going to die, they could just come to my cabin. It's only half a mile away. Yeah. Do you yeah. think, Seems do you really think strange to me. clothes belong to the same person? No, I think it's two different people. One had woman's underwear and the other one had men's. And it's almost like it was a couple that got lost or something happened. Oh, okay. But nobody, but there are no missing persons. There's no police report. There's nothing. It is my, I was curious, what was the response from law enforcement when you told them? I had a guy come out and I, I showed him the film. I collected the clothing after that. I just took it all, you know, and put it in a bag. Cause I didn't want it just sitting out there, but this is after they looked at it and they're like, well, you know, maybe they were drunk and left it. I'm like, why would you leave a coat and a blanket if you're drunk and you're freezing? I, mean, I just didn't understand it. Yeah. They really didn't care to me. It's like, no, oh, this happens all the time, but I've never seen it before. Wow. Was this a uh, Utah or uh, Nevada? This is on the Utah side. Okay. Yeah. It was, I don't know. I mean, I went, I did like, like a bunch of loops to check for bodies, make sure nobody died, you know, yeah. they wandered off in the cold yeah, or that... whatever, but there wasn't anything. It was almost like they dropped their, it's almost like they were there eating a lunch or something. Cause they, there were packages of like granola and then all of a sudden they just disappeared. Something scared the tar out of them and they took off running. That jacket's not important anymore. <laughs> exactly. You're scared. That kind of stuff isn't going to matter. Right. Right. You know, so, I don't know. I, I just, it was, uh, my son was with me. He's like, what's that stuff? You know? And it was just weird. Well, and looking at the area that you live, it, it really doesn't belong to just be, sitting out there by itself the other thing that i'm curious is uh, yeah and i don't want to say everything's bigfoot i'm just okay so i'm not going there right. but, what, but sometimes um they will ransack or raid and they'll do it sometimes sneakily you know stealthily um somebody's campsite miles away and then cache the stuff uh um, right somewhere else so i'm just throwing it out there it's i'm not saying that's what this is and not even sure it sounds like it but it's just you know well one thing that was strange is my fence is like six and a half feet tall i think they were gonna use it to keep out deer or whatever this is before i built my cabin um but the fence was pushed like pushed down where you could step over it oh and no human could do that. I'm thinking I, at first I thought maybe a horse or a, or a deer or an elk or something did it, but, but it was right next to the clothes. And so I didn't know what to think. So this is a field fabric worse because then I won't ever come out here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wire fence. It's a wire fence. Is it the kind of the wire rectangles or no, um... it's the square. Um, yeah. You, it's not barbed wire. It's square, super, super hardy. I mean, you can't yeah. get through it. You right. can't even it the, Is it what they call the, uh, uh, what we use around here, and I have it here on my place. It's, uh, it's a high tensile wire that uh, we call non-climb. Uh, we put it out for the horses because they can't actually exactly. put their foot 
Uh, yeah, and it's 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 a, a square or rectangle uh, fabrication. Uh, I mean, maybe two by two. Yeah, yeah. The mm-hmm. squares. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah, see, well, I, we that's su- exactly what I, guys. So that's exactly what I have around my property, and it's uh, over six feet tall too on pipe, uh, 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 all fill pipe. Um, you know. <laughs> no um, person's so, going to climb it. No, you're not going to climb it. My cats don't even bother climbing it, but uh, I put it up here for a different reason. The guys know why I put it up. So, so um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, Will, have we ever run into a situation where, and I used to build fences as, when I was in high school, junior high school. We called it field fabric. Have we ever seen a situation where the field fabric or these wire fences have been pushed down? Anything like that? Yeah, my, Come to my mind? dad used to call that pig, <laughs> my dad used to call that pig wire. <laughs> um, yeah, there was last summer right. we were up in uh, the field, and there's a fence that goes around a uh, what is that? A Forest Service scientific area. You know, yeah. they they block those areas off with that kind of fencing, and <clears throat> at one portion. And it's actually in our documentary that'll be coming out. Uh, there's a portion of the fence where you can see something had grabbed it with a large hand and it's crushed the the wire together, and then pulled it lengthwise apart. Yeah. Wow. And that's now, are you talking not about happening what you, with people. Are you talking about uh, uh, hog wire there? What you call hog wire? Because that's an entirely different type of fabrication than what. Uh, um, what I was talking about. What, what are those, Tom? Because probably. Hog wire is actually a big. It's yeah, a, they're. It's what are those, like heavier, four or six inch heavier, squares? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're rectangles. Bigger. Yeah, it's, they're, it's they're, a they're, very heavy gauge wire. Yeah, um, that's hard. You can't wire. break it. Yeah, yeah. you can't yeah, break it. Yeah, this stuff was pulled and apart. So, pulled apart, it's something stretched. grabbed it and stretched it and then twisted it around. It wasn't done by a machine or somebody. Um, yeah, it was. Uh... See where these yeah. clothes were? It's like something bent the fence all the way down so they could walk over it. Yeah. And then the clothes were put there. Something came from inside my property to that point mm-hmm. by the way the, the, the fence was bent. It was just strange. How long ago was this? I mean, I know an elk could bend it. If it tried to jump it, it could bend it. You well, couldn't why? break it, but it could bend it. Why would um, an elk do that? They they don't elk don't come up to human. No, and an elk could heaven. jump this fence easily. Yeah, but it was it had to have been in October, maybe November of last year before the snows hit. Okay, so not that, that long ago. I don't know for sure. I don't walk yeah. the fence line very often. This is the first time I've walked it in two years, but. I know it wasn't two years ago. It was it was last year. Yeah. How um how far away is the fence from your house? From your well, cabin? Some parts of the fence go right by my cabin, but the other parts are, you know, twenty acres away. Oh, okay. Thirty where they were. Um how about but this area just, where it pushed down? Was it close to the cabin or far away? No, no. It was as far, far away from the cabin as you could be. Okay. It's almost, it was weird because at first I thought it was an elk. But then I thought, why would an elk bend the, 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 the fence that far? It could jump higher than that. So Yeah, I and they wouldn't, know. I don't I, think... <clears throat> An elk wouldn't do that anyway. They'd get no. They'd be concerned no, there's elk about all over the place here, and I've never had that happen. Yeah, well, I mean, I actually have elk that in August that come up to my balcony, and they're they're um, uh, you know, their their mating ritual and all that stuff. There's their scream or whatever they call it. I can't even remember. Oh, bugling, bugling. Yeah, they bugle right out my my right out the door and I've never had them bend the fence. They just jump over it. It was just, well, it was just the weird. Clothing, because was, it, the, was the clothing underneath bushes or was it just laying out in the open? No, like, oh, no it, was just, it was just laying out in the open and it was oh, right to the side of that bend where that fence was pushed down. It was right next to it on the other side of the fence. Hmm. 
I mean, I, I filmed it all. It's in one of it's in one of the one of the videos I had in the last couple of weeks. But it's just between the two of them, I just couldn't figure it out. I, you know, I don't want to think the worst, but you just don't know. Well, I, mean, I I'll, wouldn't I'll believe it. Something. I'll tell you something I saw and that was kind of, it's kind of comical, but I mean, I don't know necessarily if this is something that Bigfoot thinks too, but you know, uh, you see sometimes in some of these, uh, um, films that they have out there that, uh, especially with pet macaques that they keep, they love to drag their blankets around with them. And, right. um, they're like little kids with their blankies, you know, and right. uh, so when they, when they actually release these guys back into the wild, uh, a lot of times the, uh, the, the, the former pet owner, if you want to call them that, the, uh, I call it pet abusers, but uh, right. uh, they, they turn them. They, yeah, they, they, ha- they will send them out with their, their towel or their blankie or stuff. And then these, these, they will drag them around for a long time with them, you know, and throw them over their head and, and, and cover themselves up with them and such as that. But now here's the, the, the funny thing is that I've also seen where, uh, you know, there was a, uh, uh, in a chimpanzee, uh, enclosure and one of the guys, uh, they had people working on the, doing some work on the inside of the enclosure. And they always have somebody watching the chimpanzees when, and with this situation. And actually I was kind of thinking like, why would they even have them released at this point in time to have any kind of interaction with the humans? But the guy went off and left his, uh, left a shirt. He kind of had an overshirt, like, uh, like a flannel shirt on and then, and then took it off. I guess he was getting warm took it off, laid it down, and we walked out, and then, and then it was kind of like he realized that it was still there. And that one of the chimpanzee, chimpanzees immediately ran over and grabbed it, and he was going around twirling it, and then, then he was, like, uh, putting it over his head. And then he was, like, it, it, the silly thing was it almost looked like he was making attempts to put it on. You know, they, they really do oh. have a concept of, you know, us wearing clothes. So I guess they think, well, maybe – We'll try this too, you know, but he never managed to do that. I mean, he'd stick a leg in the armhole and, and stuff like that. And it wasn't, it wasn't working out so well for him, but so finally he just threw it over his head and was wearing it as a head ornament. So <laughs> it, it was not as common. It, it really calm makes calm you calm wonder, calm. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. I mean, the one thing though, is there was a blanket that was just over the fence. It was rolled up like it was like on a backpack. Uh-huh. It was an orange blanket, and it was completely rolled up perfectly like they bought it brand new. And it hadn't been unrolled. Wow. It was weird. I mean, the whole that's thing. It's almost like weird. somebody's, somebody, yeah, that's, uh, again, I'm just going to say, I'm not saying it's Bigfoot. I'm just saying, but they, if they, if they apprehended it somehow, and then for whatever reason deposited it there, because why would a person do that? with a brand new blanket and not, you know, it's not even unrolled. So, but, but what is weird is the the flannel shirt that they had was just a little ways off from the rest of the clothing. It was weird. Oh, and then they had long johns. They had bib overalls. They had uh, underwear. I mean, really? Oh, so they had a bunch of stuff. I would think all that. Yeah. You know, if that it was is, me. That is bizarre. And there was no duffel bag or uh, or uh, there was no duffel bag, it? no pack, no duffel bag, no nothing. Hmm. Huh. And you couldn't pack all that without that. That's what's strange to me. Yeah, I mean, there were even cans point. of food, like like green beans and and chili. You know, you you, you you're not going to put those in your pocket. Wait, you're saying there's a can of beans out there? There was. Okay. It was rusting over, so that's pretty much what made me think it had to have been in the fall, because it was really rusted. Yeah. Forrest, what do you oh, think? God. A can of beans. I think I, I think it's probably one of my guy's uh, cousins or something. You know, they have this thing about beans. <laughs> it's it's, I like it's kind of an inside joke we have with her. She uh, <laughs> she had one of the creatures come in her house. And whacked her on the head with a can of beans. You did? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 
don't me, still I don't live, live there, do you? Like that. Huh? <laughs> do you still live there? Uh, well, it's it was my cabin, and the cabin's still on my property. But no, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I had put this cabin up right after my house burned down. I've since <laughs> I've since got wow. another home. But, uh, uh, yeah, it it came in the the door and just pushed in the door, and the guys were like, "Well, how come you didn't hear it?" And I said, "Well, because I had my freaking earbuds in, listen to these <laughs> uh, silly shows at night called Freak Devil and." And such as that. Hey, listen to Sasquatch and you got some I, I was listening to stories about Sasquatch while Sasquatch was sitting there watching me, very probably very bemused about the whole situation. And I don't necessarily think that you know, we, we've talked about it. I don't think it was necessarily trying to kill me, but I think it just picked up the beans, which was handy. I, I, you know, of course, my cabinet doors were open, so I don't know if it took it out of the cabinets or it was sitting on the cabinet. I don't remember. But I think it just pitched it over there on me and, um, you know, and it clocked me in the head. And I, I think I told the guys, I, I still have a, uh, an L shaped scar in the middle of my forehead Dang. where it cut my forehead. That's what woke me up was the, the blood running down my, my, my head. So, well, and, I and think if it wanted to kill you, it probably would have finished you off. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, crazy. Anyway. <laughs> I think if it wanted to kill you, it would have finished you off. But that's oh, yeah. still insane. I've never had anything like that. Well, that's you know what? Crazy. I don't want to have anything like that again. No, 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 no. That could that's, kill that's you. Been a, that's been our inside joke. Anytime somebody talks about a can of beans. <laughs> you know? Well, I, <laughs> I guess you don't like green beans anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, these, this was actually uh, Bush's. Uh, uh, you know, they always say pork and beans, but you know, I don't remember if they're pork and beans or bushes beans. I know that, they're, but uh, that's crazy. <laughs> that stuff is heavy. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're lucky. That's all it was. Yeah, it, it's uh, you know, I, I that's what woke me up. I mean, I had blood running down my face, and uh, I was just like, <laughs> and I sat up, and I, you know, I had to laugh because this can of beans rolled down my pillow. And I just picked it up nonchalantly and set it over on the nightstand, never even thinking, putting wow. two and two together. You Do you know? think it was and watching I'm just you? Like, oh, my God. Well, see, this was about uh, two months after I'd had the situation with one come up and uh, actually was uh, moving the air conditioner, the wall unit, uh, uh, the window unit around. And uh, I thought that one of the horses had come up and um, was – uh, scratching it with their butt and using the air conditioner to scratch their butt on. And I was, right. uh, I didn't to, to scare them away and realized that I, when I looked out the window, it was completely black. There was no light out there. <laughs> oh, wow. And, and then after my eyes got adjusted and I was suddenly started seeing, uh, you know, these muscles on this chest and I'm like, going, <laughs> oh, this is not oh, that's good. scary. <laughs> See, that's so, scary. I know that yeah. feeling, and that's not a good feeling. Yeah. I, 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 didn't have that, I didn't have that kind of feeling, no. I, I, it was quick and done, but I didn't get hit. That's scary. Well, the moral well, of the story. The thing I was going to ask you about is when you said the hut, uh, what did that actually look like? The what? I'm sorry. When you said, didn't you say, refer to it as the hut? That y'all came up on and found the the uh, oh the, the yeah it was like a there. hut it was like mm-hmm. a little teepee type thing it was almost it was almost like a it, it, it even a man a man couldn't even have fit in it it was little and it but it was dug clear back where you could hide things in there but you know you couldn't fit in there it was almost like it was a nursery type thing. That's what I thought. Hmm. It could have been anything else, but that's kind and of that's what the I one thought. with the bones that that had the bones in it. Yeah, that no, the bones weren't in that. The bones were up, up the up the canyon just a little bit more. And I almost think that maybe it was like it was during this time of the year. Maybe there was a nursery. Maybe there was you know some kind of some reason to react the way they did. There was only one that I saw. How did it turn well, out? I needed to see. 
with you and your son, you said about a week or so ago, what, how did that turn out? You guys just ended up leaving the area and did you well, see anything I, at all? I, or? I mean, he was kind of freaking out. I told him, I said, you know, we have a gun and we we're not doing anything wrong. Just keep walking. And we, and we were out actually looking for arrowheads. We weren't even out, um, you know, looking for Sasquatch or any kind of sign. And then we kind of just, we kept kind of looking and keeping our eyes peeled and working our way back to where the four wheeler was and nothing else really happened. I mean, it's almost like they sensed we were leaving, but you know, they were never close enough that I could see him, but he's, I mean, he's like 11. So, you know, he, the way he was, I knew he saw him because I could hear him, but I just, wasn't looking for him and he was i was looking for arrowheads <laughs> yeah wow hey but, I, one one thing i wanted to do was real quick is maybe you and Forrest could sort of um maybe briefly compare notes between the circles that you had and what she has on her property sure and is this on your property or is it just no oh, no. Okay, just out in public land or something. No, this is up up in the mountains. It's at about 7,500 feet. What I found is most of the activity that I find is around 8 to 8, eight to, well, 7,800 to 8,500 foot level. Most okay. of it. Okay, yeah. Um, that's not all of it, but that's where most of it happens. And they had a fire up there um, last year. And I went up to, to see what happened. It was a, it was a lightning fire and it burned itself out luckily. But when I got past the fire and walked down into another area, there were these foot pedals, like it almost looked like a horse, you know, those horses that have the thing, the lead hooked to them and they walk around in circles, Mm -hmm. you know, the race horses, how they do that to them. It looked like that. I mean, you couldn't distinguish footprints, but you could tell it had been walked around a hundred times or more. Yeah, you're talking it was about a horse strange. Walk. That's why I videoed it. Yeah. What you're talking about. I've never seen walk, anything right? like it. I actually have one of those. That's crazy. I mean, I wished I knew the reason. Well, well I'm glad I you did. I got them and I wished I knew the reason too. I mean, it's what was just around and around and around and around in circles out there? I even thought, well, maybe it was a, a bunch of juvies that kept chasing themselves, ch- chasing each other around the tree, you know, because it's like the debris. Uh, of course, I, the guys have seen my pictures, and it's just, uh, it's uh, we have red uh, sandy loam out here. And uh, but when I took, when we noticed this, this we'd gone through a horrible drought for like two years and it was just, it was hard baked out there. There were no prints or anything, but you could see it was a, about a three foot wide, uh, you know, path that was co- cleared around and it's perfectly in a circle. I mean, you've seen them. It's Tom. perfectly and, in a circle. Yeah. I, and it's, yeah, I and it's got Brent. debris, you know, tree debris, you know, like yes. the, the, uh, yeah, the like cedars the, dropping the, and know, stuff like, like if that. Like a pinion drops pine needles or a juniper yeah. drops whatever they drop. Be, they're off to the side, you know, and, uh, you know, and then on mine, the, the, these almost form a figure eight because they're, they're two, uh, two cedar trees that they've gone around and around and around and they, they're like adjacent to each other and they form a figure eight. And then there's a path going off to the, uh, the, the North West on one. And then there is a path going off to the Southeast on the other. So it's just, I mean, I'm like, what what was in their mind you know and i thought well maybe they're out there picking the the juniper berries off um you know i I don't know medicinal purposes for those yeah maybe i mean i know i if i knew what i know now i would have went and looked for tracks i just thought i didn't know what to think i saw them and i'm thinking well what the hell is this i mean who does this you know i'm thinking who would do this? I'm thinking people. And then I find another one. 
the same thing. And then I filmed it. I'm like, this isn't normal. And th- nobody's going to come out here and wander around a tree for an hour. And, well, and, and I'm curious because both of them appeared as if they had wandered around these circles so many times that they had actually created a kind of a depression where the path is. Is that kind of what you oh, saw? Yeah. You could have filled that thing with water. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it made no sense to me. I mean, I didn't look and see if there was like a figure eight or anything. I, I wasn't, I didn't, now I would look, but I, I didn't realize back then I saw three or four of them of those kind of things around some trees. And I just thought, I don't know, maybe it's some kind of mating ritual. I didn't think that, but maybe it was, I don't know. It's, it's oh. uh, definitely a, uh, an odd thing. Well, Brett, what I'd like to do, we're running up, uh, we're running out of time, but what I'd like to do is if you see this again or anything else that's odd, uh, you know how to get a hold of us. I do. And uh, we want you to stay in touch for sure. Okay, I will. And, now that I and, know that I'll look for the figure eight thing and see if I can find any of that. Okay. Tom, yeah. Tom is that, you know, that might help. Yes, I did send him your pictures. Could you and send me here? Yeah. I will. Uh, I'll have to go through, and, and I was trying to do it the other day. I was trying to remember which episode it was. So I'll go through, and there was, there was no snow, right, in that episode? No, there was no snow. Okay. I can, I can scratch those off. Okay. Yeah. I'll find them for yeah. us, and I'll send it to you. Okay. It was almost like they tried to make a moat. <laughs> right yeah exactly that's what it does look like doesn't it and same thing yeah. on forest yeah yeah all right all right well, well i Brett, i appreciate meeting all you guys and and i'll keep in touch yeah stay in touch and uh if any of us make it down into your neck of the woods we'll give you a holler first and see if we can Absolutely. go out and check out that fantastic area you've got so yeah well, listen, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And if you've made it this far, uh, it's, a, it's a great show. And uh, the only thing we ask is that you like and subscribe, share the show. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can do so. We've got a link to Patreon in our YouTube description. And I've said it every show, but for as little as a dollar a month, uh, you can you can help us to help you and produces content so that said brett all right Tracy, i appreciate you guys yes forrest chuck will everybody thank you so much david take care bye brett bye-bye bye-bye brett take care buddy thanks for listening to this episode of creek devil If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's william, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.